coming up soon, we have basically a huge shift in technology taking place, primarily surrounding the way that power is delivered to various components uh, within your PC and within mining rigs, specifically the graphics cards that will be, you know, utilized in the newer generation. The power uh, platform is going to have to change over to PCIe 5.0. And we have the MSI Meg AI 1300P and AI 1000P power supplies, fully ATX 3.0 and PCI Gen 5 ready. So these will be 80 plus platinum. And they say it has a brand new GI engine, whatever that means. But a few months ago, we showed you MSI's brand new Meg power supplies, which are amongst the first to feature the Gen 5 standard. Now we have more details confirming that these PSUs are not just fully PCIe Gen 5 compliant, but are also based on the brand new ATX 3.0 standard. The MSI MEG power supplies will be the top offerings from the manufacturer and initially include two variants, the 1300P and the 1000P. There are several features that these PSUs rock besides the ATX 3.0 and PCIe Gen 5 standard. First and foremost, we have to talk about the rated power output. The MSI MEG A AI 1300P offers 1300 watts of power while the 1000P offers 1000 watts of power. The MEG AI 1300P offers 1300 watts of sustained power through its plus 12 rails and 108.33 amps. Its voltage is rated between 200 and 240 volts. Now the most interesting part about both of these PSUs is the GI gaming intelligence. The new GI is based on an MPU, a smart processor that controls the whole AI assisted process of the PSU. Some of the main features that GI engine provides through the MSI center application include real time power status monitoring, multi and single rail switch, it can switch between single and multi-rail according to the needs of users while taking into account high current output and safety protection and intelligent fan mode. The other most important thing to note here is that both of these are fully Gen 5 and ATX 3.0 compliant, which means they come with both a proper PCIe Gen 5 connector on the PSU unit and also come with necessary cables. MSI bundles the 1300p and the 1000p PSU series with a 16 pin to 16 pin connector cable up to 600 watts and a separate 16 pin to 2 by 8 pin plug adapter. The first one is designed for 600 watts of power to a graphics card while the second can deliver up to 300 watts of power to a graphics card. The rest of the cables that come in the box uh, are included here. A single 16 pin power connector that can supply up to 600 watts of power to the card. You can see that the connector rated for 600 watts of power delivery is Gen 5 compatible and not designed for legacy Gen 2 or Gen 3 cards. With the power supplies and the cables out of the way, next up we have to talk about the PCIe Gen 5 and the associated power excursions. Remember we talked about power excursions last week and some of the problems that they provide. I think what we're seeing here with the kind of onboard chip in these power supplies is to help manage these excursions because we are hearing of crazy, crazy power spikes all the way up to 2400 watts, depending on, you know, which GPU we're going to be getting in the 20 in the 4000 series from Ada Lovelace. So it says that the new ATX 3.0 standard is designed to sustain the PC load of up to 200% for 100 US uh, use and 300% sustained power for up to 100 US for graphics cards running on the PCI Gen 5 connector. We have been told that the system with a 600 watt GPU, 300 watt CPU and 300 watts for the rest of the equipment will have a peak excursion of up to 2400 watts. 200% of its rated wattage. While a 600 watt GPU will require at least 1200 watts of ATX 3.0 standard power supply. The Goldilocks zone between, seems to be between the 1000 and 1200 watt range for the next gen high end graphics card. So if you're planning to build a new gaming PC with either a 4090 or a 7900 XT, you better make sure you get a PSU with the respective wattage range on the ATX 3.0 standard. Companies like ASUS have announced their ROG Thor Platinum 2 series 
are Gen 5 compliant, but they haven't stated any ATX 3.0 compliancy uh, yet and don't feature any Gen 5 connectors too. So they claim is so the claim is very fishy. Getting a high-end and expensive PSU such as a Thor 2 series might not be sustainable un, or, or suitable choice unless ASUS confirms its full ATX 3.0 conformity. This truly puts MSI's PSU lineup as one of the earliest to support the new Gen 5 interface. Currently, there's no word on pricing or availability, but more details are expected to be announced by quarter by the second quarter of 2022. Plus, there might also be an even more powerful Meg PSU on the horizon. Stay tuned for an information for information on that soon. This also does pros kind of an interesting question for uh, people in the states. Now, I know depending on where you're at and how your power is is allocated. Even gaming rigs are going to be in an awkward position where like, let's say you wanted to do two 4090s. At that point, do you need to get, you know, a 220 volt a plug just for your PC setup at that point? Because remember, if we're doing a 20 amp by 120 volt, you're really already around that. What is that? That is the 2400 mark, right? So let me make sure I, I got to make sure that my my in head math is right because I remember doing this before when we were building rigs. So, 120 times 20 that's 2400 watts. If you have a single power supply, okay, even a single power supply, high end power supply, and a total system power excursion possibility of literally flipping a breaker in a standard plug 120 plug in a U.S. home, that's ridiculous, guys. That's absolute insanity. And they're mad at miners for, for pushing more power. Come on. What is this? What is this? <laughs> Gamers are going to be flipping out, looking up mining videos on how to basically go ahead and be able to run more than 2,400 watts. Um, wow. And if we get even crazier power supplies that are like for a high-end system, you're just sitting at like, you need like a 2,400 watt power supply just off the bat. Also, what's interesting is like when they announced this too, if you look here, it says it's voltage is rated between 200 and 240 volt, not 120. Are we really getting to the point to where you will not be able to run a gaming system on a standard 120, 20 amp plug in your office. I mean, that is where the potential is, right? At this point, wild. That is actually like a problem that may be coming. Uh, Tommy says that it, it's only if uh, for the 100 uh, use, so then the capacitors take that load, hence the 2400 watts. Yeah, but I'm talking about if we go above that, right? So, I don't know. Anyways, they have other power supplies on the way. I don't think like obviously Crossfire and uh, Crossfire and NVLink is not going to run on a standard 120 volt, 20 amp plug. I don't think. At least off the top of my head, I don't think that that's going to be possible. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.